Well, I think it's time to start. I'm going to turn off the lights. Uh, well, my name is Sivlot, and I would like to talk about uh, FreeBSD binary packages, and in particular about the tool named uh, package or package ng previously. So, uh, package is intended to replace old package art and package install tools, but unlike these tools, it uses uh, the central database for local packages and a set of remote repositories. We use uh, CQLite 3 for both of these purposes. Um, what are our goals when we develop a uh, package? So first of all, we would like to improve users' experience in uh, management with binary packages. This includes basically easy installation, removing or upgrading of packages. We would like also to integrate better with the ports and to perform all tasks, um, including, for example, complex ones, um, to be performed automatically or at least with the minimal intention of user. Moreover, we want to uh, make our package uh, to be more secure because it is the tool that is executed with uh, superior user privileges. And we actually believe that if we can make our package good, we can encourage our users to use mainly binary packages. But we don't want to prevent users from building uh, custom packages from ports. For example, enabling some uh, options required. So how we want to integrate with uh, the ports? So first of all, we have uh, already uh, added the support for stage directory. Stage directory is the intermediate target for ports installation. So after ports uh, are built, they install their files uh, into stage directory and it is possible for package to get uh, these files from stage directory and uh, create packages. Um, this approach helps us um, to build ports from uh, unprivileged user, which is quite important for automatic build systems. And moreover, we can build uh, several packages from a single port. And in particular, it is very useful for slave ports uh, for example, PHP port has a lot of slave ports, like uh, different modules for PHP. And by using stage directory, we can just build it once and create as much packages as we want. Um, and what is planned, we would like to um, use packages to resolve build dependence for ports. It sounds strange, but I think that make system is not enough to resolve uh, complicated dependencies. And therefore, I think that it is worth to uh, convert uh, dependency resolution from ports themselves to package. So what's new in package 1.3, that is upcoming release of package? Now, first of all, uh, we have implemented new solar that can uh, handle conflicts, dependencies, and complicated upgrade scenarios. I'll try to describe them later in more automatic way than previous one. Then we improved the security of uh, many operations by using uh, sandboxes. Uh, so basically we use Capsicum for uh, isolating all potentially dangerous operations. So uh, the uh, basic scenario is that we uh, execute package, then we fork, and then we uh, enter capability mode and then execute some unsafe operation. Uh, and then we return um, some result via either by uh, exit code or by some socket pair. Actually, we consider uh, many operations as unsafe, but currently we've implemented it for uh, archive extraction before uh, signature checking. Then we check signatures in the separate sandbox. And moreover, we pass one XML entries in sandboxed mode. But actually, we want to introduce this sandboxing for all uh, package tasks that uh, don't require super user privileges. Actually, we need them only for modifying database or modifying your systems. <coughs> and we have added the concurrent locking system that allows you, for example, to uh, query database when you, for example, fetch packages or do some other long-term job. 
and I think it should improve uh, users' experiences. Well, the basic package architecture is presented on the uh, following diagram. So uh, we have user requests that comes to Solar, and Solar converts it to some internal representation, um, and it resolves tasks and converts it to a set of jobs. So, for example, install this package, fetch this package, remove this, and upgrade that. And after that, uh, these jobs are executed, and you have new uh, file system st status, so with new packages, and new package DB status, so you have new local database. Well, oops. So what are the problem with the uh, current solar? So we cannot now resolve conflicts at all. So if you're trying to install some conflicting packages, you need to remove old one manually. And actually, it is uh, not always possible, because sometimes uh, you need to, re to, to upgrade uh, packages, but they're, for example, renamed. And you don't want to remove your package, and you don't want to run the installed scripts, and so on and so forth. So uh, there is no alternative supports. Well, there are some package management systems without alternatives, but actually we want them. For example, now we have a system of alternatives in our shared libraries, dependencies. So we have uh, provides and requires. So a single require can be satisfied by many pro provides. And the second, and the finally, um, the current solver cannot uh, do many tasks at time. So it can merely install or upgrade or remove, and it is not sufficient. Uh, for example, for upgrade, you need to install new dependencies, you need to <coughs> remove conflicting files, and so on. So what are the complex tasks that we need to solve when uh, designing new solver? First of all, we have a lot of renaming in ports. So if you open ports moved, you would find a lot of entries there. Uh, and this renaming can be simple. So for example, we rename some, uh, pack, some port because of upstream change. Uh, then there are some complicated scenarios, and they are very funny. For example, we had some package A that was split to three independent packages, A, B, and C. So you see that A is um, remaining in the both local and remote repositories. But the problem is that A, for example, depends on B and C. There are new pa then there are new packages. But it's obvious that since B and C contains some file from old local A, they would conflict with this A. So we cannot just install B and C and then upgrade A. It is just impossible. So um, there is some solution to uh, split upgrade procedure of A, to remove A, then install B and C, and then upgrade A. It sounds complicated, but it is the only way to resolve this in non-conflicting way. Because otherwise, you will have either conflict or missed dependencies on installing. It is bad because, well, we, have, we can have some installation scripts that depends on some components and system and so on. We have the same problems with joining packages in one, but they are solved in the similar way. Moreover, ports can be reorganized. So some file can be moved from one port to another. And what's more tricky that these ports can be dependent. And actually, you can do only um, upgrade split upgrade procedure as it was described previously. We can have dependencies changed, adding or removing new conflicts, and all these operations require some advanced logic in SOAR. But there are a lot of other tasks to uh, be resolved before we can uh, do package management tasks automatically. For example, we have now no conflicts in our ports. Well, there are some conflicts, but actually there are a lot of hiding conflicts. And actually it is a big problem, because uh, you cannot resolve conflicts without conflicts. And the problem is that remote packages don't contain file lists. So when you're trying to fetch some remote packages um, from the repository, you don't have ideas about which files they do include. And there are actually three ways to resolve this issue. First one is to prefetch packages, uh, read them locally, read uh, file lists from them, and try to find conflicts between fetched packages. But obviously, it requires more iterations of 
uh, solver. So you need to fetch packages. Maybe some of them are just not required because they are conflicting. You need to resolve this uh, universe. And actually, the, this procedure can happen multiple times. I personally have observed two times of this procedure. So you fetch, then you need to fetch more, and then you find even more conflicts. And it is quite confusing for a user. So you need to um, press yes or no for each time. The second uh, possibility is to have a file list um, that includes all files from all ports in some repository. But there is a problem with this approach as well. The problem is that we need to somehow index this file to find conflicts. And making this database is quite uh, cost, it's quite an expensive procedure. And actually from my observation, um, this file can um, be multiple hundreds of megabytes. And it is not something that we want to have. The third approach is to have a um, conflict file built from repository itself. But there are two problems in this approach as well. So first problem is that um, we need to load files when we create a repository. And there are two types of manifests inside of package. One manifest is short, so it contains only metadata required for a mode package. And one manifest is long. Some, some packages like LibreOffice, like Firefox, contains so many files that their uh, full manifest is 10 or 100 times larger than small manifest. And you need to extract it. And you need to process it. And you need, finally, to make this database on the server side. So repository creation with full manifests is 50% uh, slower than uh, repository creation at the moment. And if you add conflict resolution, it is uh, about four times slower than it is now. So we've decided to um, choose the first uh, choice. But actually, all these three features are implemented in package, so we can switch if we decide. And then, uh, actually, we need to set priorities of jobs. So uh, actually, it is, um, you need to install your dependencies before dependent packages. You need to remove conflicts just before installation of conflicting package. And for reverse dependencies, you need to uh, upgrade your priority to be installed before this reverse dependence. And moreover, this task is not so easy because you need to deal with remote packages, local packages, and upgrade tasks can be splitted. So actually, it is not easy. Well, what um, are the most common approaches in the existing package management system? Basically, there are two approaches. The first approach is to use some algorithm, and basically, it is used set algorithm. I'll describe it in details further. And the second approach is to invent some heuristic to uh, solve these uh, tasks. Actually, well, both approaches are uh, viewable, but the uh, invention of heuristics is sometimes very complicated. And actually, it depends on your packages organizing. So if you don't support alternatives, it is quite easy. But if you add alternatives, it is not easy. For example, APT code is just a mess, because there are a lot of assumptions, a lot of exclusions, and so on and so forth. But, uh, some, but there is a tendency to migrate to SAT solving for all package management systems. For example, Yum in Red Hat migrated from Nave solver to LibSolve that uses SAT algorithm. Uh, but first of all, we've decided to implement integration with external solvers. There are a lot of external solvers that are mostly research projects, and there are even a lot of, uh, well, so-called uh, solvers competitions, when you can choose uh, some winners of these competitions and try to test them in your code. And basically, all of these external solvers uses a format that called CUDF that was um, designed in the Mancuse research project. Uh, this format is quite straightforward. It uses textual presentation of all package universe. 
textual representation of request. And what's specifically important that it uses uh, plain numbers for versions. So you cannot just push your, num push your versions from uh, ports to the uh, Mancusi format. So we need to convert them somehow. And actually, we tried package with ASP queued solar. That was a winner in many contests of solars. But we found that this solution is not viable for using production. The problem is that actually uh, many of these solars are research project, projects. And that means basically that they are not ready for production. You can see that, for example, it can just drop core in some strange situations and you cannot debug them. They use some strange notations for loading options. You need to write some walk around to handle that and so on and so forth. Then um, this CUDF transformation is quite expensive. So you have internal presentation, but you need to convert it to CUDF. And this means that you need, for example, if you have Nginx uh, 0.6.0 and Nginx 0 0.6.1, you need to convert them, them to Nginx 1 and Nginx 2. And vice versa, when you read the reply from solver, you need to convert them back. It is not uh, complicated, but you need to always keep this in mind. And this IPC interaction, so you need to fork exec to feed this CUDF to pipe, to re read this CUDF from pipe and to pass it, it is rather expensive. So actually, we need internal solar. Uh, we have different alternatives. So first of all, we think about using something uh, ready, such as libsolve. Uh, but for libsolve, actually, you need to write a backend for packages. And you need to backport a lot of code to libsolve itself, because it is the complete solution to manage packages, and it is not compatible with ports. Uh, then. Um, It is not that. Okay. So we can write some our own uh, heuristic for solving um, package management problems. But as I've said, it is complicated. It uh, would uh, cause code bloating, and it would be even more complex than it is now. And we don't want to do it. And the third alternative is to use some known algorithm. Well, this algorithm is called SET. It is Boolean satisfiability problem. It is very old and very well researched uh, problem. Um, basically, we have a set of independent Boolean variables in this problem, and we have an expression. So we need to set values of these variables in such way that this expression is true. But uh, there are some uh, assumptions to simplify annotation. For example, um, this is some SAT expression, this one. And uh, it consists of uh, multiple clauses. Um, and these clauses are joined using logical end. So actually, each clause should be true to uh, lead this expression to be true as well. And clause is. Uh, set of uh, variables that are joined using logical all. So actually, you need to have only one member here to be true, to set these clauses true. But how this uh, set problem is linked with packages? Well, actually, we can convert uh, all our uh, package relationships to this SAT expression. So first of all, uh, we create so-called package universe. Um, it is some, something like we have uh, packages with different names and different versions. And actually, all versions of, with this name are conflicting. Uh, it is needed merely for upgrade uh, purposes. So actually, if you, you can have uh, different versions and uh, you, ha you can have um, different packages with the same name and version installed. You need uh, just to have uh, them non to be non-conflicting and to provide some way to find out upgrades. So actually, we can find that uh, version 2 is upgrade for version 1, but they are conflicting. And afterwards, you can set other uh, relationships between packages. So there is dependencies, relationships, conflict relationships, and so on and so forth. 
then actually you need to convert your uh, universe with all relationships to set problem. First of all, you assign uh, to each package, to each version of the package, an individual variable. So for example, we can assign um, for package A variable A1 and for package B variable B1. Uh, then we should convert our uh, installation or removing request. So it's obvious that for installation of package A, we need to have unary clause, uh, just this variable. So it will be installed anyway. And for deleting vice versa, we need to have a single uh, unary clause with inversion in, in, inside. Uh, and then we need to convert uh, dependencies and conflicts into SAT clauses. They are basically not so easy th than the unary, but for most dependencies and conflicts, they are two array clauses. So for example, if package A depends on package B, either of version B1 or B2, then we can either have package A not installed or any of versions of B installed. Well, this is quite simple. So if we have A, um, if we ha have A installed, then this member is zero. The first member is zero. And we need, uh, therefore, either B1 or B2 to be true. That's dependency. And for conflicts, we have um, more uh, complicated uh, expression. We need to convert it to a set of clauses. But each clause is quite straightforward. So we need not uh, B1 and not B2 installed. Actually, this means that only one of these packages can be installed. Or neither of packages can be installed. This is true for, our, for sure. Uh, the main problem in set problem uh, is its complexity in naive approach. So if you try to assign all possible values for all possible variables, it has a complexity of O from 2 in power of n. And for example, if you have 3,000 of packages in your universe, you need to solve task with a complexity of 2 in power of 3,000. 3, and well, it is not solvable. So there are uh, some assumptions and tricks to simplify that problem. And in particular, it is quite straightforward to simplify this problem for packages. Um, actually, there are four tricks that I'm going to describe further. So first of all, uh, there is um, trivial propagation. So you have your request and your unary clauses. And definitely, you can assign variables um, just by definition. So you need this clause to be true, then A is definitely true. And you need this clause to be true, and therefore C is false. So you need to remove C and install A. OK. Then there is a trick called unit propagation. So what is unit? Unit is a clause that contains one and only one uh, unassigned variable. So for example, this is a unit. We assigned variable A, but we haven't assigned variable B. And what's more important, that unit must have false value with all variables assigned. And it's true as well, because A is true and not A is false. So the value of unit is false. And it have B unassigned. So it's obvious that we must assign B as true, because otherwise this clause won't be true and the whole expression is unsolvable. And for conflict, it is obvious as well. So we have not A, not A is true, and not D must be true, must be, not A is uh, false, sorry. So not D must be false as well, and therefore D is false. Uh, and it is conflict relationships. So actually, by this unit propagation, we solve practically 90% of all dependencies and conflicts in the current packages. But it is not enough, because as I've said, there are some alternatives. So some package can depend on both local and either uh, remote version. So actually, we can use, we can either set uh, version unchanged or try to upgrade it. And we use so-called DPLL algorithm for these purposes. DPLL is very old algorithm. It was invented in 1968 by a group of computer scientists but it is still used as the base of uh, other advanced algorithms. Basically, this algorithm is good enough for packages because of um, 
that it is uh, that it is completely based on the initial assignment. So if you can provide some good initial guess for assignments, it works fast. And I'll describe why we can do it. So um, the idea is quite uh, simple. So we have a set of variables. In this example, there are three variables. And we try to assign them some values based on initial guess. So we decided to install x1, to remove x2, and to remove, oh, oh, sorry, and to install, install x3. And then we find some conflict. So if you assign this variable uh, true, then this uh, expression is not solvable. So sum of clauses is false. OK, then we need to backtrack. So we return to level before and try to inverse our assignment. So if we try to install x3, we try to remove x3. And actually, this can cause to another conflict. So we need to backtrack more. And this can lead to the following tree of solutions. So we backtrack one level, uh, try to inverse our solution, and check for conflicts. And finally, we found that our first assignment was false. So we should uh, do a lot of backtracking, because actually, we assigned the first variable in incorrectly. But it's obvious that this algorithm can be turned, in the worst cases, to the to in power one. But actually, it is not possible in case of packages, I believe. And what can uh, make this DPLL algorithm effective? So actually, uh, there are some package-specific assumptions that can help us to uh, make initial guess uh, very good for this task. First of all, we need to keep installed packages if they are not conflicted with uh, new ones. And we don't need any new packages that are not requested by a user. So we just try to set them to zero initially. And actually, this guess works in practically all cases. But for renaming for that complex scenarios I've described previously, it is not true. And you need some backtracking to solve really complicated problems. And that takes time. So um, actually, we have two solutions now. We can either use CUDF and external solvers, or we can use our internal solver, uh, convert our package management problems to set problem, request it, solve it, and get profit. Uh, so what are the perspectives of um, these solutions? So first of all, uh, we want to use uh, package solver for solving dependencies for ports. Well, then we want to have better support for multiple repositories. And it is obvious that without uh, these propagations and uh, backtracking, we cannot use alternatives. Um, then it is possible to test different research projects and finally uh, change our internal algorithm to that one. Um, then we can have more complicated dependencies. So not only A from B, but including versions and so on and so forth. Then we can have uh, provides and alternatives. Actually, we now support uh, shared libraries provides and requires, but we want to introduce uh, provides and requires for binaries. And it is uh, some goal for future versions. So what we want uh, to do as well is to create uh, flexible dependencies. So we want. Um, Actually, this is a format that is used by Man Mancusi CUDF with uh, certain um, peculiarities for ports. For example, we have some options in dependence formula that is needed, uh, for example, for uh, custom ports, for custom packages built from ports, and we can have some custom dependencies between uh, such a ports. And actually, if you have some uh, package that is built with non-standard options, all reverse dependencies must be built from ports as well, by obvious reason, because otherwise you, you would have conflicting situation with different options. Um, then uh, this uh, format would allow us to use alternative dependencies. So uh, in this example, you can depend on two different libraries. Well, and alternatives for binaries. It is something very... Uh, strange, but sometimes it's required. Uh, for example, you can, you can have uh, git 
that can depends on text editor for editing commit messages. And it doesn't matter which text editor is installed in your system. It can be Vim, Emacs, or whatever. And we want to have some sort of uh, virtual dependencies, uh, like we have for shared libraries. So we can have provides and requires. But it is much to be done in this direction because uh, we have no support from ports at the moment for both of these problems. And actually, we have several issues to be resolved before releasing 1.3. First of all, we cannot find candidates for uh, non-automatic top-level packages. So, for example, if you have Apache that is top-level packages, so no other packages depend on this Apache, and it doesn't exist, for example, due to renaming, and currently package want to remove it, and it is completely wrong. It needs to find some um, install candidate in the repository and suggest user to install this candidate. So it is most critical bug that currently exists in package. Uh, also, we uh, upgrade packages incorrectly. So uh, now we are trying to rewrite them. And it is very bad. It is um, non safe for binaries and shared libraries. It doesn't work with uh, immutable flags and so on and so forth. So we need to rename, install, and then link, like many other package management system does. And Actually, it's not a problem to implement it. And actually, we need more testing. So I can ask everybody to use a new uh, package 1.3, if possible, and report bugs, and if you want to participate in our development. Well, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Questions? Yes, actually, I think about adding just uh, a solve command for package. It is very uh, simple. And to accept some uh, KNF formula in the input and output, the assigned variables or uh, unsolved decision. So I think uh, it's, it can be useful for other uh, systems in base. But the only problem is that package is not in base. Okay, other questions? Well, so that's all. I just want to add that uh, this is our We need a lot of people to test you the new version. We need a uh, big version just after the conference with all the recent pieces, and we need a lot of people to test it. So it's not a test you just install the latest. So here is, for example, uh, some sort of sorry, some sort of complicated upgrade. So, for example, in this case, oh, sorry. No, it's, not. it's still broken. <laughs> Okay, so you can see that, um, well, it is a, 
again, again bug of Timux. So we need to rerun this process. It is DPLL solving. So you can, mm, no, it doesn't work, okay. You can believe me. So uh, actually, during this complicated upgrade, uh, there are a lot of tasks to be solved. You need to install new dependencies. You need to reinstall packages with dependencies or with ABI changes. Or you need to upgrade packages. You need maybe to remove them. And for example, if uh, there are no local packages in the cache, you need to fetch them before and to extract file lists. But actually, I, I think that it is a great step comparing to package uh, 1.2 because it wasn't able to solve uh, these scenarios. Yes, but it shows something not related to this output. You need somehow to uh, scroll it down several times and try to page up. I don't know why it happens. Yeah, the question is merely in ports and not in package, because package can handle them it without. Can handle it, but yeah, like switching the ports to do the picture. I see it's pretty straightforward. You just strike out all the dependencies, or I depend on the ports thing, which could be taken uh, some kind of required. Yeah, and if not, here you break time. So basically, look, if you are removed, uh, just uh, extract this. Say uh, it's the 